we're gonna do an illustration using brusho and watercolor, but this illustration is gonna be a little bit different. We're going to use some of the chaotic properties of the brusho to try and actually render some flowers. So the materials you're gonna need are at least one cup of clean water, some masking tape, um, a small weld pa palette, a pipette, some uh, paper towels, your brushes, and your brusho plus whatever watercolors you're gonna to wanna to regularly use. All right, are you guys ready to get started? So we've got this illustration of Kara walking through some flowers, some wildflowers, and you guys can check this out and download it for your own use over on my Gumroad. I've got the link right there. It's just a book. I recommend you print it out with toner-based ink. That's important. Toner-based ink on some watercolor paper. The next thing we're going to do in this tutorial is we are going to tape down our image to prevent it from buckling. I'm using Windsor and Newton mold made watercolor paper. It's cold press, but it's got a texture very similar to a rough press watercolor paper, a lot of texture there. You want something with a lot of texture so the brush -o has somewhere to go. More texture on the paper, the better off you are. And I am trying to tape off just the edges since this is a small illustration. If you purchase this image and print it out um, at home, you can print it out larger since the scan is 600 dpi. So there is plenty of room for you to make big if you'd like. Or you can use your own illustration. All right. So we've got this taped off. One of the first things I wanna do is I wanna mask off Kara's skin because that's what's going to be the most affected if I get some stray brusho on there. And you can use some scrap paper. You are gonna to wanna to work over a light source. Let's hope this works. Um, sometimes it is difficult to see through these heavy watercolor papers, which is why you guys don't see me work with a light table very often. Yeah, just enough. So um, I'm just using a note from this uh, little pad I made a while back when I was testing out um, printing procedures. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to wanna trace it out. And then if you have it, use some low tack adhesive to just adhere it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. the arm wrong all right so we've got our basic masking completed now the first thing I want to do is I want to do an all-over wash other than um, on her skin and I want to use normal watercolor for that in fact I'm going to use green gold I'm just gonna paint around this mask because this mask is not actually going to prevent um, water from seeping under. It's intended to keep brusho from landing on it and staining the paper. So I'm going to take the largest round I own, which is actually a synthetic. It's a Mimic synthetic from Jerry's Artorama. And I'm going to mix some of this Windsor & Newton green gold that's a little bit off camera in with this pool of water. And I'm just going to apply a really quick kind of rough wash. It's not really a true wash. I just want to start toning it and um, sort of applying green to the background since she is amongst some flowers. Now I'm leaving some areas untouched. I don't want it to be, you know, just completely washed over. And I'm working around the masks I put down. And after I do this, I'm actually gonna go over with a clean brush, clean brush of water, and um, sort of blend this out. The Windsor and Newton paper is really good for that kind of stuff. Now I do wanna pick up some of the wash that's in that flower. And I'm integrating just a little bit of it into 
the character. And this video is part of a series on my blog. It's uh, in watercolor basics. And on the blog, I focus on um, how to show you or on showing you guys how I do watercolors for um, illustration purposes and comic purposes, which is different from fine art in my opinion and my and in my experience and then over here I show you some of the techniques that might not work as well for comics but work okay for illustration or are fun for illustration but might not be archival. Basically the intention of the whole series is getting you guys watercoloring, talking to you guys about watercolor and talking to you guys about my projects. So as you know, is so often the case. The only thing left to do is let this dry and dab out maybe some of the excess pigment. And I did this wash all over the way I did it. Um, so it would influence the flowers, the colors of the flowers, the colors of the dress, so that everything sort of looks like it belongs in the same picture plane. And off camera, I have a lot of reference going on when I'm painting flowers, I really like having reference available and I recommend you guys do the same thing. So I'm going to, you know what? I'm actually gonna go back into that green gold in certain areas and just sort of intensify it a bit. Sort of dancing it around the flowers themselves as much, it's gonna soak in a little bit, but and I love green gold. It's a very intense, bright color. While it's still kind of wet, still damp, I'm gonna use a smaller round, still synthetic. This is a Neptune. And I'm gonna float in some darker greens, mostly towards the bottom here, and not all over either. Just sort of sporadic, add some shadow, and tone that lovely green gold down just a little bit, make it read more like she's wandering in a garden. The green gold is nice because it helps imply sunlight. The goldenness of the sun sort, sort of um, shining through the flowers. And if it goes on too dark, just take your paper towel and sponge some of it up. And you can always re-blend it black back in. Since a lot got soaked up in, I'm gonna, maybe not. Maybe that's not a good idea. It might still be kind of wet. And you see where it blended into the dress or it merged into her dress? I'm actually okay with that. I'm going to have to introduce some green anyway to imply um, sort of shadows, uh, sort of reflected light. But I need to let this dry. I should disclaim now that A, although I use brush oil all the time, I've never actually done this trick uh, technique. So we're gonna be learning this together. Two, you need, when working with brush oil, in a controlled sort of situation, you need to make sure the paper is absolutely dry in between steps because brush will find any little bit of water and attach itself to it. And um, even though it may not look like it activated, as soon as you try to paint over it, it can create a big mess and it can be kind of frustrating to deal with. So while I enjoy using brush and I recommend you guys give it a shot too, please try to keep those things in mind. Um, so this paper is still really wet. Um, so I'm gonna have to actively step away from it for a little while, and then I found an area I hadn't painted. I'm gonna have to actively step away from it for a while, because that's how I handle, uh, you know, people ask me, how can you, how are you patient with watercolor? How can you, you know what I mean? Like they have trouble waiting for things to dry. Um, that's, that's how I do it, is I have to, I have to remove myself from the situation because otherwise I, will just nitpick forever and something else I could continue working on this background but I actually want to let it fully dry out and then revisit it later after I've painted the flowers to give me an idea of how much contrast I need to build uh, I've noticed with the Winsor & Newton watercolor paper 
that it can become reactivated even if you think it's fully dry. Um, and that's because it can hold a lot of pigment on its rough surface, but that pigment hasn't always, um, it may be applied so thickly that it may not have truly set. So, um, you know, I'm trying to be really careful with this paper because while I enjoy painting on it, there are some quirks that I need to take into consideration. And I'm pointing that out to you guys in case you saw me using this paper paper, and you were like, yeah, I, I want to give it a shot. I just want you guys to have the same information that I'm working with. So I, like I said, I'm going to step away from this, remove myself from the situation. I'll come back when this is fully dry. The green is pretty much dry, so I'm putting away my traditional palettes for right now and I'm grabbing some brush out. And I wanna start out pretty simply. I'm starting out with Brilliant Red, Gamboge, and Violet. And the first thing I wanna do is I want to apply water over here on this spray of purple somethings in the background. I'm not really filling them all the way in, sort of doing some, you know, gestural brush strokes. Um, because after I sprinkle the brush o, I'm going to continue to pull it. And this helps me get into some of those harder to reach crevices. If there are any areas you notice need a little more. And I'm pretty much just using my brush now to encourage the brush -o to blossom. And what I mean by that is gently touching it with just a little bit of extra water. Anywhere it seems too saturated, I'm gonna go ahead and move it and I'll let that dry. All right, so while that dries, I'm gonna go over, go ahead and switch over to another purple-ish thing. And for that, I'm actually going to grab purple. This is violet, which is kind of a misnomer because violet is more of a red hue usually, and that is a very blue hue. I'm gonna go ahead though and wet down these little fuzz balls, and I feel like I was kind of heavy-handed with those. And for the ones that have a variety of colors, I'm not trying to mix it all together. I want it to stay kind of distinct because that's one of the great things about brush out. Now, on this, I'm gonna go back in here I can't really reactivate any of those, it looks like. So I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of violet back on it. See, it darkens up just a little bit. Move those pigments around a little. And I can always go in with white gouache and add some highlights if I get too, too heavy handed. I can also sprinkle the brush o into my little weld palette. That's initially why I, I grabbed it. The problem with that is you're going for the colors that have multiple uh, shades, multiple colors within, you're going to lose a lot of those by mixing it out like that. So now we can start in on some of these, you know, testing it to see if it's dry. Some of the peonies in the background not peonies, I'm sorry, po uh, <sighs> poppies. Had to think about the Wizard of Oz for a second because it was like, I know they're like in that iconic scene where they're going off towards the Emerald City. And you can see I am definitely picking up some of that purple. So I'm gonna use a little bit of 
brilliant red and that one comes out a lot easier and I gotta be careful because maybe I should switch to a smaller brush I've got some little details that I want to hit but I don't want to make a huge mess okay so now I'm going to blend that red a little bit better. And part of the problem is I probably should not have done overlapping flowers. I probably should have taken that into consideration. It's a really nice color though. And over here. And see where it's bleeding into the purple flowers? Uh, you know what? I'm going to embrace that. It's got sort of a fun, let me, let me zoom in for you guys. Sort of a fun, um, less controlled look. You know, that's definitely brush -o. Is <laughs> You gotta give up that control. So I'm gonna allow that to happen. We're gonna have to come back and do an illustration that is just flowers and play around with, whoa, saw that guys? play around with a spray bottle. Oh, you couldn't see that because I didn't even have it on camera. Sorry. So lately on Pinterest, I have been, I've always been really interested in like pioneer living, pioneer clothing. Uh, I have never cared at all about steampunk, but you know, if there was like pioneer punk, I would be all about pioneer punk. Uh, so I've been delving more and more into like 70s renditions of those sort of fashions because Little House on the Prairie had its television debut in the 70s. Uh, and I just love some of the aesthetics used in the illustrations, um, especially when it kind of comes to like color play or like weird color palettes. I mean, everybody... It's sort of a running joke, you know, that the 70s were a time of like poor fashion choices sort of thing. But I, I love how playful they are and how it just, you know, it doesn't, it didn't matter as much as being happy and wearing the things that make you happy. And uh, I really want to start bringing some of that feeling into my little standalone illustrations like this. I mean, this dress is definitely inspired. I think it's inspired by a Holly Hobby pattern, dress pattern for little girls. Okay, so I need for these to dry and then I can do the flower on her hat and the sort of daisies spread in the foreground. So if you've got some brush out powder just sitting, you can blow it away, but you can also loosen it up with a soft, dry brush. <sighs> I mean, you're still going, it's still going to be there and the brush will be d dirty afterwards. You don't want to directly paint with the brush. And then as soon as it gets even a little bit damp, <sighs> you're done using that brush, but it does help to move the pigment out of the way. All right. Now we can move on into orange and see how the red, um, even though I brushed a lot of it away, the red sort of reactivated. This is why I masked off most of the skin. I did uncover her arm right there so I could get in and um, sort of tighten up those purple flowers. Now, uh, if I want to with this red, I can mop it up with a paper towel, but I am, where's that orange? There we go. I'm not going to, I'm actually going to sprinkle my orange onto it, take advantage of it. And maybe even a little shot of vermilion. Now I have these little 
daisies down here to think about. And what I'm going to do with these is I'm only going to color in the center. Do them one at a time to help me control. And I'm going to use a little bit of gamboge. So I want to darken parts of these. So I'm dabbing just a little bit of water in and I'm gonna go ahead and add too much, but you know, overly zealous hand, add just a little bit of water. Not trying to reactivate the pigments that are already down. Just wanna add, not there we go, enough water. And I also, don't know if I can get any darker with purple on this, but I'm gonna try. Ooh, look, that red activated, that's nice. I'm glad, because I really wanted more variety of color in there than I was going to get. Now, the problem with brush out is you have to be kind of delicate with it because it will reactivate. I think I'm going to switch over and a little, whoa, that came out too much because it's so fine. Just want to add a little bit of blue, sort of complement all that red. Ended up adding a lot too much blue. It's okay, we'll work it in. All right. I. I doubt the color is gonna stay that pretty, but I can dream, right? Just delicately dab it in there. And it's going into that orange, which like I said, I think I'm okay with that. So our base layer of things has dried. Gonna take that soft, dry brush and just sort of brush away like I showed you guys earlier some of the excess brush out you can also um, use like a drafting brush I've used that before I think on on channel and uh, go off your desk like on over a trash can or something because you really don't want to don't want to have like too much brush out just like hanging out on your desk and give it a good brush. So in fact, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead, untape it, and then retape it. Get that excess brush-o off the paper. Okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead and tape it down again. And I wanna tape it where I had it. Believe it or not, I'm almost done with the brush -o. Um I don't want to, because it's so difficult to control, I don't want to rely on it for fine details. So I'm gonna switch over to my regular watercolor palette when it's time for that. But there are still a couple of things I need to do in brush -o. I'd like to do in brush -o. I have a daisy in the background and I also want to add some brush-o to the green in the background to get more of a variegated effect. Went ahead and I got myself a cup of clean water and I'm going to apply some water to this, ah oh shoot, that is so purple. <laughs> I wonder if it's purple because of the brush-o or if it's purple because of, I don't know, I hit like a patch of purple or something. So with this one, I'm gonna go ahead, I should not have gotten the paper wet. I'm gonna go ahead and activate it, working around that mask I put down. Then I'm gonna use a paper towel to sort of pick some of that color up, although I seem to be depositing color, because I'm a genius. And then I'm going to Rewet, and 
apply some lemon. Apply a little more in the center. Though it doesn't seem to be doing anything, not even dissolving, so maybe that should be it for the lemon. Now, this flower has to dry before I can start adding the green to the background. All right, so it's time to move on to adding a little bit of brush -o into the background. And you can see that by adding water already, we're activating some pigments, that's fine. And I really only want, oh, you know, I was about to say I only wanted a little and then that just like went all over the place out. It's a really nice color though, isn't it? Emerald green. It's wet, so it should dissipate into that. <laughs> I really didn't want that much. And I don't want it all over the place either. I really just want a few sections where I applied brush -o. Emerald green is such a pretty color. Where I applied brush -o into the background. I really like how red that poppy, how much red is leaking from it. In my instance, it seems like the leaf green is a little bit easier to control, so I'm pretty much sticking with leaf green. All right, you guys know the drill. I didn't get as much interplay with the colors as I would have liked. I think it's because I honestly kind of over-rendered it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to over-render it even more by tightening up some of my colors. And for that, I've pulled out my regular pan watercolors. Starting to activate some of the colors that I think are going to be beneficial. But you know, that's that's part of the fun of like hanging out and playing around with you guys is it doesn't always turn out um, the way I want it to, but it, you know, I often get interesting results that I didn't expect. And there's also something neat about kind of going too far and then realizing that and pulling your work back, figuring out how to do that. So right now I'm mixing a saturated purple with some indigo. And we're gonna start pulling details back in to these flowers back here. See, I definitely oversaturated it because you don't get to see as much of the color play as I want. I should have aired towards a lighter hand. And you know, even if this doesn't turn out okay, even if I can't salvage it, that's fine too. We learned something. And that's what this is really all about, is me showing y'all stuff and us learning. And when I can learn along with you, that's the best. Blend some of these out a little bit. Okay, so as is my luck, it has started raining outside and uh, those of you who watch my stuff regularly know that, you know, wet weather like that will affect your dry times. So um, I was doing really well earlier this afternoon, very speedy dry times and then the rain started and it's just like, oh man, there it goes. I am going into that background just you know, here and there, and darkening, darkening it up with some um, hooker's green. 
spreading it out a little bit with some clean water. I'm only doing it selectively because I really want a bouncy sort of light interplay between uh, you know the darks and the lights in the background. I want it to feel a little more dynamic and you know introducing some dark darks and some light lights will help do that. Especially when I can use it to promote contrast, like with this daisy up here. Darkening the background around it will um, make it pop out of the background a little bit more. You could do this with two brushes. In fact, I think in the video I recorded yesterday, but it doesn't mean it went up yesterday. Um, yesterday my time, not yesterday in your future time either. I was like dual wielding brushes for a while. Sometimes that's easier. Sometimes it gets confusing. And you rinse the wrong brush and then you try to spread with the wrong brush and you know, you got a mess. But I'll try dual wielding over here for a little while. Of course, I keep running my hand into that red. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna take some of that green gold, blend that in as well. Though there aren't quite as many places where I can put it now. Maybe in just some of the darkest areas down here, float just a little bit of indigo. Some under her hat too might help make her face pop out because it'll create visual contrast. Of course, it's killing me because it's messy as heck. I can think of a few ways to sort of clean it up, but it's hard. It's hard for me, guys. All right. Y'all know the drill. Gotta let that dry. All right, guys. So I have to admit, I'm not necessarily feeling this piece. Uh, it feels like it's kind of gotten away from me, but I'm going to persist and see if I can't, you know, turn it into, wield it into something that I enjoy. And part of it is definitely I should have stuck to one type of flower um, and I should have been really loose with how I rendered those flowers. And what happened is too many colors, too much going on. So, you know, I think that's good. I think it's important that you guys see me fail or struggle because this isn't over yet. Might turn out okay. I think it's important that you guys see me so problem solve. Um, hopefully that will empower you and make you feel like it's within your ability because it definitely is. And you know, I don't know about you guys, but my art education did not include troubleshooting and problem solving because by the time you finish the piece, you know, it's time for the critique and they point out a bunch of mistakes or whatever. However, your critique tends to go, maybe they love it. Uh, but there isn't necessarily a lot of, and you could do this and this and that, and it would actually really help. I mean, in a couple of the classes I had at SCAD, I had professors who were, they had enough uh, industry experience that they could offer that kind of advice. And I learned a lot from them. But in general, I mean, your, your fellow students, a lot of them only have the same amount of experience as you do. They might be better drafts people, but they don't necessarily have the problem solving experience. So it's something you often end up learning kind of on the job as you go. So if there is value in you guys watching me fail, and I think there is value in that, I don't want to deny it. 
especially on YouTube where a lot of the artists, uh, due to a variety of reasons, they turn um, their process pieces into time-lapse things. So you may not even realize that they didn't like something they did because, you know, it's time-lapse. They're not talking about it or they'll do a voiceover after. And some of them are really good about showing, oh, you know, I didn't care for this, so I redid it or I did this, this and that and that kind of hit it. But it is the sort of thing that if it can be reiterated time and time again, it should be reiterated time and time again because it's really important. All right, so even though some areas are still wet, I'm gonna go in and darken up a few things. And work around them and try to lighten up some of this purple flower. It was originally supposed to be lavender. It is clearly not a lavender color. Too dark to be lavender. I've got a white color pencil here though that will hopefully help me add some highlights or snap, you know, whichever. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to knock in a first round of highlights using this white color pencil. I'm gonna be really, really generous with it, add in a lot. And then I'm gonna go over it with a little bit of water using a mostly dry brush, sort of blend it out. With just the intention of softening some of this up, some of the line work on the pencil. Once you add water, it's going to become a lot more translucent. It's one of the things I don't really care for about white watercolor pencils is you tend to lose a lot of them as soon as you add water, but that can be used to sort of blend it out too. If you want something a little more opaque, you can go in with white gouache or Copic's opaque white or a white color pencil. You're not going to be able to get much blending though with white color pencil. That's a little bit better and we can always go back in later. Also with these sort of pom-pom looking flowers, I'm going to blend that out a little more so it extends a little bit beyond the flower. And then when that's dry, I'm gonna go back in again with the white and reintroduce some highlights that got lost. Right, guys so I really didn't like how sort of disparate the flowers in the background look so what I did is I ran a brush with clean water and sort of muddied up the edges a little bit and hopefully when it's dry it doesn't look so like cookie cutter poppies cookie cutter purple uh, flowers cookie cutter this cookie cutter that it looks more like these things that belong together that's one of the, the problems I was facing when I was messing with the brush oh is that I was working with everything kind of as a distinct unit and so they felt very divorced from each other even when the colors intermix they still feel kind of divorced from each other and that's not something that's not working for me um, another problem with brush oh is the colors are very synthetic like um these reds are very 
like candy color because they're dye based just like many liquid watercolors so I am having difficulty using them compared with how I normally use colors now I this might sound like I'm making excuses I'm just trying to you know troubleshoot hopefully what I did will help it might not we might learn that it doesn't help and uh, you know we've lost a possible solution but at least we'll know that anyway I can't really do anything with this until it's dry so I'll see you guys in a few minutes all right guys it is still wet big surprise and I was thinking about it and I think I figured out what is really 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 bugging me with this and that is just how non-natural some of these colors look like um, some of the reds and the poppies for example are just so candy color that they I don't know I just know they're not natural and I don't really paint with these colors a lot the last time I did something with sort of an, a natural color palette was when I did my candy coated wonderland piece for uh, the bravest warriors search for cat bug book um, and I used uh, liquid watercolors specifically because they were very unnatural looking so um, and this is actually the first time I have used brush -o to try and create something that looks like something else so it's you know kind of a learning experience um I, another thing is it's very wet outside so it's taking a really long time for everything to dry as i've mentioned a few times um and i'm getting to the stage where i'm like overly working some things and not working other things at all um i really like how the little daisies look especially like the bleed area that looks really cool to me um but you know most of these daisies were non brusho i mean that was the white of the paper plus a little bit of really watered down paints gray and then i let it bleed um whereas some of these other things are very much brusho colors and i tried to tame them but you know mixed success All right, so as I continue to nitpick and possibly even overwork into point of no return, um, the bottom of the flowers is a little too bright blue for me since it's a background element. So I am taking some uh, neutral tint, which is a, it's sort of a blue purple. It's a really lovely color and just sort of toning it down a little bit since it is a shadow color. Next year's New Year's resolu resolution ought to be uh, no more overworking. No more overworking pieces. All right, gotta dry. More and more guys, I think about how much I really want an artist like a low artist bridge. So I'm adding some white details back into these sort of purple globe flowers. They may not actually be called globe flowers, but they're shaped, they're round, little spiky ball flowers. So maybe globe flowers. Adding some detail back into those, like I said. And I'm going to fade some of them out a little bit. And I've got my skin tone mixed. So even though not everything is dry, I think we can go ahead and see the damage the brush -o has done. Now I did cover up the face for sure because that's one of the things that would be a huge pain in the butt to try and make corrections on. And already you can see there's some purple there. And I'll just do my best to sort of blend that out. So I think the mask actually did a pretty good job of protecting the skin from too much uh, brush out. On some of my commissions before I really got the hang of how to do this, and I would use brush out for a quick background, uh, it was really difficult. I had a lot of difficulty controlling it going on the skin. So I had to get good at just kind of, you know, uh, working around it. I'm actually fine with where it did decide to settle though. And you guys can 
maybe C where I've been, you know, trying to blend the flowers into the background a little bit more. I think I keep saying this, but I really think this time I'm going to mostly leave them alone and uh, just come back to them in the final stages. And gonna first off, I'm going to knock in an all over wash of a very, very light blue on her apron. Of course, it's picking up, activating some brush -o, so a lot of yellow brush -o. It's okay. It actually makes it look kind of like sun-kissed. Of course, that yellow comes from the centers of those da daisies where I use gamboge yellow. And uh, the blue is going to neutralize it. All right, drying break. All right, let's go in with another layer of skin tone while it's still kind of wet. Just sort of float it in there. Whoa, look, <laughs> look at that transition. It's really apparent in person. It goes from like sunny yellow to like verusha salt blue over here. And let's add some more yellow ochre and some more scarlet. Make skin a little more pronounced. Go in under the flowers. Ugh. Stinking brush -o. Even though I tried to be careful, it still got in there. So I don't want to get my hopes up, but I feel <laughs> I feel like I'm like beating it into submission. And normally I wouldn't recommend that you guys do that um, because your time, if you're learning, your time can often be better spent just starting from scratch um, and taking what you've learned about what you didn't like and applying it to the next thing. But I also think. You know, sometimes you just don't have time to start from scratch. Maybe you're on a deadline. Maybe you're filling commissions. So you have to make what you have work. Um, so I, like I told you guys earlier, I do think it's important to show that side of the process as well. And sometimes you figure out the game plan as you go along. I mean, things don't go as planned often. Especially with watercolor, because like I didn't think it was going to start raining today. It was gorgeous earlier um, when I got started and everything was drawing pretty quick. <laughs> and then it started raining and everything sort of flip-flopped. And that's just watercolor in humid weather, you know? And if you enjoy watercolor, it's just something you're going to have to... Have to deal with maybe especially if you live in the south uh but you guys have heard me talk about trying to paint in louisiana <laughs> how frustrating that can be so i'm not gonna go into detail on that again the arm no that arm is not dry i was gonna go paint the lace in but that arm is not dry however the face is moderately dry so i'm gonna go ahead and knock in some shadows on the eyes. Get that going. Oh, you know what? I was about to start painting in skin and then I looked at the eyes or remember to look at the eyes because I just painted those, remember, and saw that they were not dry. So, since I've got my brush loaded up, I'll go ahead and paint the work on the arms you just have to be patient about the eyes. So I also realized I have a little island of dry. So just to make my life difficult, I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in with some indigo. Tell you guys something, it's probably pretty frustrating watching TV with me while I'm working, while I'm recording, especially watercolor videos, because I am constantly like, hey, pause that. I, you know, my thing is dry. It's time for the next step. <laughs> but I'm also constantly like, okay, you can put something on now for like three minutes or however long it's going to take to dry. Oh, 
Is the face dry? Mm, those eyes are still wet. <laughs> All right. So you guys know the drill. So I thought I had the camera on and it wasn't on. And now it makes me wonder how far back I've had it confused. I was just painting her skin, which is why I thought I had the camera on. From this point on, I'm going to be rendering Kara in time lapse. If you guys are curious about how I paint people in a, the way I paint people, um, you can check out some of the videos that I'll link in the description and I'll go ahead and link them right here in the annotations. But uh, I'm just going to handle the rest of the normal rendering in time lapse. So I'm going to start adding opaque white details with this gouache. And I found that when applying gouache, I like to use a nice stiffer synthetic brush. So, you know, all those times I tell you guys, mm, synthetic brushes, uh, there, there are uses for them. Applying gouache is a good one. I'm mostly just using the white gouache to pop details into the background. Um, shoot, brush it kind of reactivated. And you want to have kind of a light hand with your brush if possible. Not brush it, sorry, with your white gouache. Just about done, I think. Okay. And I have one spot of gouache that was a little heavier handed, so I'm dab it up. And then carefully reapply a little bit more of the sepia. I'll add some over here and a little rub. 
right there. Okay. And just a little over here. Okay, so thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. We, <laughs> it, this, this sort of evolved into something else. Um, so we're gonna have to hang out again another time where I will really and truly use brusho more like brusho and less like paint. Um, take advantage of the sort of um, nice color explosions you can get from brusho. Those definitely got lost in this piece, which is a shame, but you know, we got to go over ways you can salvage it. Um, you guys saw me, you know, <laughs> work and fight with it. It's not a, a perfect piece. It certainly didn't turn out the way I intended. Those white key, and, I mean the red, I keep wanting to say peonies, the red, uh, and they're not posies either. Poppies, the red poppies did end up a fair bit more intense than I planned it. Planned, planned. Um, just knocked them back a little bit again. Since uh, it's a background element, it's just so, so hot and so large, like the sun. Use a little bit of purple, knock it back. Anyway, once that dries, I can remove it from its prison. Like I said, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you were able to, to glean something from this, even if it was just, you know, stuff you don't want to do. I mean, I'll, I'll take that too. Um, I think it is important to have that sort of stuff when you're learning to see other people make mistakes so you understand that it's okay to make mistakes. I, I want you to, if you can go away with anything, it's... It's learning how to make and salvage mistakes would be great. Um, so I hope to see you guys again real soon. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. If you're not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel so we can hang out again. Um, I would super duper appreciate it if you left a comment, if you have any questions, and if you shared this video with your friends on your social networks. Your good word means a whole lot, and it would help me out a bunch. Another way you can help me out is um, by checking out my Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup. That'll help help me fund future videos. So um, I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you soon. I'm Becca Hilburn from Natto Soup Studio. Bye.